absolutely nothing. I mean, seriously, it does not matter. Now that's of course, long story short. In reality, the subscribers themselves do matter and the act of subscribing matters, but that total subscriber number, completely worthless, kind of. We're just doing kind of a maintenance day here on the Zach lift. You can see it's uh, it's been road hard and put away wet a few times now. <laughs> Running back and forth out to the eastern part of Oregon. Uh, truck and trailer tow from the east side of the state back. A couple broke down pickups out there that I towed with this because they were pulling cargo trailers and loaded down heavy. Stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I hit 200,000 subscribers a month or two months ago, something like that. And uh, there was a lot of comments, a lot of congratulations, and I appreciate that. But it, it's not, it doesn't really mean anything in the, in the grand scheme of things. And there's also a lot of people thinking, man, you're going to make the big bucks now and stuff like that and think it jumps you up some other level in the YouTube world. And it just doesn't. But we're going to go over what it does mean and uh, why it doesn't matter all at the same time. So I already did some greasing on this thing, like the, uh, the ram pivots, the main boom mount back there, the underreach extension, um, stuff like that. One thing I'm going to try to get done today, but it's super windy, is I want to paint these hooks to match their sheave head, their uh, colors, because they're color coded on the sheave heads and on the remote control as well as the controls here. But the problem is both the hooks are red. So when you're looking at where they come off the boom, great, you can tell which one you need to go up and down with and all that when you're running two winch lines at once. But if you have your hooks way over there stretched out doing a recovery, and you're over the bank or something like that, both the hooks you're staring at are red, you need to pull this one or that one, you don't know which one's which unless you could see all the way back up to the boom head. Simple solution, paint the hooks. Okay, as far as the 200,000 thing and pay, which is what people are most interested in, no, you don't get paid any more at all. Uh, your pay is not based off of subscribers. It, you can have 5 million subscribers, if you don't get views, you won't get paid. You get paid off of views and watch time. Those are what determine your pay and your pay rate, as well as what time of year it is and stuff like that, because there's high seasons and low seasons for advertisers, which means their advertising rates or advertising space in our channels are more valuable or less valuable. So no, 200,000 means absolutely nothing when it comes to pay. We'll also talk about this thing and what is and isn't going on with it, because there's some questions about that. Got to walk down to the shop and get some paint. A uh, subscriber number used to mean something. It really doesn't anymore. It's a pure out vanity number. Uh, YouTube's done a lot of things that make it even more meaningless, but uh, also just the algorithm itself doesn't use that subscriber number in any part of its calculations. In fact, as far as what videos it's gonna push out or anything like that. Whether or not your videos get pushed, uh-oh. Um, turn around so you can see what I'm seeing. No blue or yellow paint that I thought I had. I do have a blue can of paint, but that's not what I was thinking. Um, a lot of people think that the more subscribers you have, the more the algorithm pushes your videos out, and that's not true. The algorithm doesn't care how many subscribers you have. Uh, if it sees a good video that people want to watch, it's going to push it no matter what. If it sees a bad video that nobody wants to watch, it's going to hold it back no matter what. That's just how the algorithm works. The subscriber number is not taken into account in that at all. Huh. Um, one of the paint I need. But my printer also died um, a couple days ago, so I might need to run in town and get both of those. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. I guess I can clean those hooks off. Oh, it's something some uh, eagle-eyed viewers noticed in a previous video. Uh, this is a different light bar, a whole third light bar. Uh, when I lost the original light bar that came with this truck, uh, I ordered a new one same day because I need a light bar and I borrowed uh, the one off the rollback in the meantime. And then this one finally showed up. This is gonna be now the main light bar that gets run on this truck. Uh, this one here uses either Milwaukee batteries, it also fits DeWalt batteries, and it also has its own brand of battery. All three fit and work with it. So the good thing about that one is doing long distance stuff. If the battery on the light bar dies, you can just swap it out with another one and keep going. You don't have to worry about recharging it with the internal battery. And then this one also has a couple little strobe lights on it. I don't know how much I'll use those or if I will, but it has them. They're on a separate switch, so it's cool. I mean, in all reality, I just figured if I'm gonna lose a $750 light bar, why not double down and just lose a $100 battery at the same time? So anyway, back to the algorithm. So how the algorithm decides whether or not it's gonna push out a video 
is not the number of subscribers a creator has, it's the quality of the video and the audience reaction to it. Basically what that means is if people like the video, it's gonna send it out to more people. If people don't like the video, it's gonna hold it back. But I think there's some more involved in that that YouTube's not telling people, but it makes sense in my head and we'll get to that a little later. Check it out, I took the spikes off. Maybe it'll run good now. So now audience engagement is what the algorithm looks for in whether a video is good or she should be pushed out or not. So the algorithm can't watch a video and go like, that's a good video, people are gonna wanna watch this. But they can look at analytics and metrics in those analytics to make that determination. First one, watch time. And this is where there's kind of a contradiction in what they say uh, the algorithm's looking for and what I'm seeing in the, the actual analytics, but that's for later. Second one, likes. People click and like on the video. Third one, and this is a very big one, and that is comments. So I get a lot of people telling me like, oh, don't, don't listen to the haters and don't, don't even respond to them, they're not worth it. Dude, those are the best comments I got. Those haters are gonna watch every minute of every video I put out, and that just adds to my watch time, which increases my pay rate, and they're gonna comment on every video and talk smack about it, and those comments count towards engagement in the algorithm. And a lot of times they say something stupid and other people respond to it, and those comments count as well. So now that one comment is worth twice as much as it would have been, which is why I pin a lot of those stupid ass comments and then put some snarky reply to it. And then a whole bunch of people go back and forth on it. What I did right there was I turned one comment into 50 or 100 comments. And the algorithm sees all those in that comment count. So yes, it's a very strategic thing I do and I'm doing it on purpose and I'm using the haters to increase the amount of money that goes in my pocket. So for those of you who like to talk smack about things I do, thank you, I love it. Now another one that shows audience engagement is shares. And I think we're gonna start this truck up just to show that it does run just fine. It's not like it doesn't run at all. Um, it's just some weird thing going on with it. Anyway, uh, shares, that's audience engagement. The algorithm thinks that people are sharing this video, people like this video. Hello, old friend. I still got the doghouse pulled out of it, make it easier to work on. It is somewhere. Also, the number of subscribers you have doesn't mean that's how many views you're gonna automatically get on a video. As you can see right here, this is like a channel average. 52% uh, of my viewers are not subscribed, meaning the majority of the people who watch my channel aren't subscribed to it, and the majority of the people subscribed to it aren't watching it. So no, there's no correlation between subscriber number and viewer number, the algorithm just really doesn't care. It runs just fine. Smooth as could be, no weird noises, nothing like that. Runs great. I can run the PTO, I can run the bed back and forth, I can go drive it all around. Runs completely fine and normal until I get in the throttle under power and bring that manifold pressure up. Uh, then the turbo, that variable vane just stops opening up for some reason, I don't know why, and the uh, thing just falls on its face. So I don't know if it's an ECM thing, like the programming the ECM, I don't know if that can be recalibrated, like the turbo programming can be recalibrated or if it's a bad ECM, or if it's a sensor somewhere not giving the ECM the, uh, the information it needs. I don't know. It's not mechanical. It's something that controls that turbo is the issue. Wrecker Rick with uh, Murphy's Diesel down there in Arizona. I'll put a link to their channel down below. Uh, cool dudes. He said, bring that thing down there. I can now because I have this. And uh, he goes, we will fix that thing. And uh, I really want to do that. I think it'd be fun. One to go down there and do some stuff with them, make some videos with them, and uh, two, get that fixed. But it's been a time issue. It's, I have been so freaking busy, especially since this got done, that I just, I, I set it up a couple times and tried to go and it just has not worked out, uh, unfortunately. So I would like to make that happen though. Anyway, here's another reason that subscriber number doesn't matter. YouTube shorts. Now it's not 100% accurate to say that the subscriber number doesn't matter on YouTube. Um, there are a few milestones in the subscriber numbers that do mean something. One, you have to have a thousand subscribers to be monetized. So that means something. Uh, at a hundred thousand, you get your silver play button. That's it. Nothing else changes. Uh, somewhere over a hundred thousand in a certain performance category in your monetization, not necessarily in your subscriber number, but in your monetization, uh, YouTube reaches out to you with a YouTube partner manager. Now you see YouTube is a partnership between the creator 
and YouTube. YouTube sells advertising space on the videos that the creator makes. We as the creators get a percentage of whatever YouTube is able to sell the ad space for, and then YouTube gets the rest. I, I'm not sure if this is 100% correct with everybody, but I believe I get 58% of whatever that number is, and YouTube gets 42 for mine specifically. I'm not sure if that's like the same across the board or if that's even where mine is now or whatever, but I think that's what it is. Either way, what it means is the better we do, the more money YouTube makes. So YouTube wants us to do really good, make good videos, do things that make us more money because that's how YouTube makes money as well. So they reached out to me a while ago and assigned me a partner manager. This is a specific representative at YouTube who works with me and my channel's analytics and all that stuff to uh, try to maximize the amount of money I'm making off of YouTube. Problem is, I've pretty much not done a single thing that he's told me to do. Should probably see if this one will start too. I haven't started it in a while. Oh yeah, old faithful here. I just really like this truck. It's wore out, it's beat up, it's got the old barely running Hemi engine in it that doesn't make any horsepower anymore, but I just like it. I actually like that one way better than I like that one. Anyway, uh, the partner manager. Yeah, I've, I've all the advice he's given me, the things he's told me to do, I've done pretty much none of it. Uh, because a lot of it is like, they want me to do YouTube uh, channel memberships, uh, where you, you pay, kind of like Patreon, but on YouTube, where you pay for extra uh, perks, extra videos, extra stuff like that. But as you guys know, I don't do any of that. I do the Patreon thing where we give that money away, like use it to help people, not for me, it's for other people. And he pushed me, hey, bring that whole, we like what you're doing with that, that's great. Bring that whole idea out of Patreon, back over to YouTube, that way it's all 100% on the YouTube platform. It's easier for the viewers of uh, your account's already on YouTube. If you wanna be part of that membership to be part of that program to help others, it's all on YouTube, they don't have to go to a separate platform. And I told them, cool, I will do that as soon as YouTube matches Patreon's percentage. You see, Patreon takes 8% of all the money that's uh, given through Patreon. YouTube takes 30%. So, YouTube, if you're watching, just like I told your partner manager dude, match Patreon's percentage and I'll bring that whole program back over to YouTube platform. But until then, we're using that money to help others, so the more of it we can keep to help other people, we're gonna stay over on Patreon. I think we're gonna let that run a minute and uh, we're gonna head to town real fast and get a printer and some paint. I got a printer. Now we're gonna go run and get some paint and some parts. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really hard to run a business without a printer. And uh, I know nothing about printers, so I'm sure someone's gonna tell me I definitely got the wrong printer, but they had a printer for sale, so I bought a printer. Um, now to the hardware store. Okay, got paint, it's really windy. So let's go back home. So we're back. And as you can see, the wind is still just ripping through here. Um, park it here. So as I was saying, wow. Uh, last time we were here, I should probably shut this truck off now. Um, Another thing the YouTube partner manager really pushed me to do, take a break truck, take a break, is uh, YouTube shorts. Like I said earlier, I'm not a fan of shorts on YouTube. I think that should be for like TikTok, but I don't do TikTok hardly ever, ever. So yeah, they're really, really pushing shorts and he's right in that shorts work. They really do work and they are a way to grow your channel. What I wish YouTube would do would be to separate the analytics from shorts and long form videos. There are two different categories on the platform, but the analytics all get lumped together and that vastly skews your numbers. For example, Edison Motors. A lot of people come in and ask if I've been following what the guys at Edison Motors up here north of me in Canada are doing. And yes, I have. And yes, I am a massive fan of what they're doing. And I want one really, really bad. I'm gonna use them as an example because their analytics are easy to see. So if you go to their YouTube channel here and uh, go to videos, they have 233,000 subscribers, really good. Uh, but their videos are 2,900 views, 12,000, 7,600, 10,000, 8,400, 31, 29, 141, that's good, 17. So they're doing good, but uh, for 233,000 subscribers, that's not a lot of views per video. But now if we flip over here to, to Social Blade, where we can see how many monthly views they're getting, 40, damn near 40 million monthly views. Um, that's a lot. Now let's go look at mine. See, I get 41,000 as a video post this morning, 141, 103, 160, 90, 
140, 277, 123, 187. Yeah, a lot more views per video. I have 205,000 subscribers. And we have, uh, there it is, two point, almost 2.5 million views per month, which is really low for me. I'm normally in the 4.5 to 5 million view per month range, but this is my slowest time of the year as far as videos. This end of summer, right before we get back into winter, it's always the big dip in the channel, so that's normal. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm getting vastly more views per video, putting out more videos than they are per week and per month, but getting just a tiny fraction of the monthly views they are. How is that possible? YouTube Shorts. Because YouTube doesn't split the analytics up between Shorts and long form videos, even though it puts them out as two different categories on the platform, Shorts get vast numbers of views very quickly and it throws off all the actual channel analytics and makes it look like that channel's getting far bigger actual video views than they really are. Like I said, this is nothing against Edison. I think the guys are doing a great job. I'm a huge fan of what they're doing. I do want to go up there and see what they're doing in person, check out that truck, do a whole video on it. We're gonna make that happen. In the analytics side of YouTube, it does show how much YouTube Shorts completely skews all the numbers and makes that subscriber number versus the view number and all that totally just kind of pointless. Ooh, I left the other truck running the whole time too. Let me go turn that off. Sorry, truck, take a break. I also know of another channel that's got 300 something thousand subscribers and whenever that channel puts out a video, um, it gets like a thousand views, 1500 views, less than 2000 views almost every time because nobody actually wants to watch that channel. But uh, because of what they do on YouTube Shorts, they get a bunch of big view numbers and uh, subscribers because YouTube Shorts makes it really easy to subscribe. So I'm not gonna name that channel because it's one of the most annoying people I've ever seen on the internet. So just, yeah, it shows how bad the numbers are. Now, where the subscriber number does make a difference is in sponsorships. Um, a lot of people are able to get bigger dollar value sponsorships and uh, more of them based on bigger subscriber numbers because there's a lot of advertisers who don't understand that big subscriber number doesn't mean big view number. So they see a lot of value in a big subscriber number and are willing to pay a lot and give a lot in a uh, sponsorship to a channel that has that big, cool looking subscriber number. Now the problem with that is uh, I don't do many sponsored videos. And when I do, I get absolutely ripped apart in the comments section for it. And I don't understand why, this makes no sense to me. I have 650, over 650 videos on this channel. Less than 10 of them are sponsored. And yet, if I do a sponsored video, I get just blasted as the most money hungry, greedy sellout ever out there for doing a sponsored video and trying to make a buck out of this deal. But many other channels like Heavy D, Cletus McFarland, pretty much every big YouTube channel out there, name one, they're all heavily sponsored, heavily corporate big money sponsored. But at the same time, people think it's so cool, all this big, badass, awesome stuff they're doing with helicopters and airplanes and buying racetracks and everything else. Where do you think that money comes from? Because allow me to let you in on a little secret. Uh, you don't make big money off of YouTube's ad revenue. You make big money off of sponsorships. That's what's paying for all that big money stuff you're seeing and loving so much on those channels. Now again, this isn't me saying anything bad about those guys or they're doing something so wrong or so bad or anything like that. These are guys who are far more successful than I am and uh, good for them, like awesome. I'm just pointing out the irony in the fact that if I do any sort of sponsored video every once in a while, uh, I just get shredded over as this money hungry, greedy sellout. Yeah, a lot of people think that just posting on YouTube and the money YouTube pays you is how you become a millionaire and rich and all that stuff, and it, it's not. It, it, YouTube can pay the bills, sponsorship is where you make money. Uh, all the big money stuff you see comes from sponsorships, not from YouTube ad revenue. But at the same time, uh, a lot of those sponsors are basing how much they're giving in a sponsorship and what the value of it is off of that subscriber number and those monthly view numbers, which is where those numbers do actually matter. But that's also where YouTube Shorts heavily inflates those numbers and allows channels to get much bigger sponsorships than they probably should based on the actual video views they get. 
But again, good for them. Profit is not a sin. Making money is a good thing as long as you're not doing bad things to make it. Uh, if they're making good money doing that, like I'm happy for them, I should probably take lessons. Here's something else some of the eagle-eyed viewers have noticed in uh, previous videos is I put uh, the 385s up front on this truck. And yes, I did steal them off of that one there uh, because it wasn't going anywhere at the moment and this one is really close to needing them. Now I wasn't like overweight on the front axle of this truck, but I was getting close. Uh, this truck is right at 13,000 on the front axle and the tires that were on it are rated at like 13, five, 13, six, something like that. And that was before I put that headboard up there. So I was legal, but I was pushing the tire limits. This truck does have the bigger axle in it. It just has the small, or had the small tires on the front because apparently the previous owner didn't need big weight up front. So it has the bigger axle, that's fine. And uh, I was starting though to get to push in the, the weight limit of those, the tires that were on it. And then I put the headboard up there, that transfers, you know, once that's full of stuff, moves a bunch more weight farther forward. Uh, the hydraulic tank over there adds weight to it. You get a couple guys in the cab when you're towing someone and they're riding with you. And, I'd probably be flirting with that uh, that weight limit up there. I guess if I was towing, I wouldn't be. It wouldn't matter if someone was in the cab because I'd have weight off the back, which makes this lighter because it's a teeter-totter. So either way, I was close, so I put the big tires on it so now I don't have to worry about it. And these are the front tires off of that truck, which are not weight rated for what this truck is when it's loaded either, but it doesn't matter because it's obviously not going to get loaded right now. I do have another set of tires for it that are kind of an in-between this and that. And once this is fixed, they will go on this and that will be fine. Now on the topic of sponsorships, yes, I, I hardly ever do sponsorships. I, I not a fan of them uh, in general, but they do help. And I've, I'm turning kind of my thought process on that because I'm realizing that and the Patreon thing helped me realize that of the more money this channel makes, the more uh, I can do for other people. And a big point of this whole channel is to help others. And if I am limiting how much I'm making and bringing in, I'm limiting how much I can help other people as well, which is kind of preventing me from my goal of helping more people. So that coupled with uh, doing that whole truckercalculator.com thing and realizing that how much money these trucks lose because of what I do with YouTube that is not paying work for them. Because like many of you know, the off-road recovery stuff we do with this pickup and the track Jeep and the four-wheel drive wrecker and all that, we do it for free to help people because I like helping people. But also, like I said, these trucks don't work for free because they are way too expensive to own for one and operate to be able to work these for free. And yes, that's what I've said over and over again. These will not work for free. But uh, as I got called out on a recent video, I got busted for working this one for free and just not mentioning it. Uh, helping a gentleman who had to move, was in a bad spot. Um, military veteran uh, has done a, a lot, put in a lot of time for our country and he was in a bind and didn't have the money to quite pay for what he needed done. So I did a seven hour tow with this truck for free. And then a couple days later, me and Grumpy went back and uh, spent another hour or two helping him load up some other stuff with this truck. And yeah, we didn't charge anything for it because I wanted to help the guy and uh, the money that is made off of YouTube is what allows me to do that. So yes, I say these trucks don't run for free and are never gonna run for free, but sometimes I just wanna help people. And, and, yeah, and yeah, really, I would love to get to the point where YouTube is making enough off of either ad revenue and sponsorships combined or sponsorships or whatever to where I can run these trucks for free when needed to help people like that and do that a lot instead of like the normal paying corporate job stuff, which a lot of it I can't even film anyway. Um, but we're not there yet, but I was able to do stuff like that and help that guy out. And there's, there's been a couple others that I haven't mentioned, um, just cause I wanted to help people. So yeah, I, I see where the sponsorships could allow me to do a lot more of what I truly love doing with this whole YouTube channel thing. I, I'm on the fence about it. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to do more than you guys. What do you think? Do you think it is worth like maybe one sponsored ad per video? No less or sorry, no more than 60 seconds as part of the video, not like a cutaway to a commercial like TV style, like integrate it into it. So it's like part of what we're doing. Um, no more than one per video. If that allows us to do more with these to help other people like 
I, I would like your guys' input on that because I'm kind of on the fence myself and I don't quite know what to do as far as that goes. So, but at the end of the day, it's what's best for this channel is for it to make more money so that I can do more things for more people. And uh, like, like uh, our Patreon thing this month, uh, I got a suggestion for something that would be absolutely life-changing for someone uh, someone suggested a, a coworker of theirs who was, had an incident and uh, their life is vastly different now. And we could do something that would change this person's life drastically. But the budget on Patreon this month is $4,000. So that's what it brought in. And we need like 20 to do what I want to do to help this person. So it's like if I was doing sponsorships that brought in that much money a month, we do it 100% and it would be so worth it. Um, and that's just kind of got my mind thinking a little different about sponsorships and their value and what we can do with them. So, God, I wish I could pull that one off. But, uh, yeah, t tell me what you think about that down below. Is it worth it or not? I, I, helping people is worth it, so I think it's worth it. So, yeah, what do you think? This headboard and that door right there also caused some, uh, a lot of comments in a previous video. And... What is funny to me is that door did not, but this one did. Everyone's very specific about the chain hanger door and how it opens this way instead of that way. And wouldn't it be better if it went that way? And no, it wouldn't. It goes this way for a specific reason. Okay, say I want to get chains out of there. Yes, by opening up to the hello outside, I have to go around it to get the chains. But I have all of this area to go around and I go up the steps, over, and into my chain locker. And now I am standing in this area right here. If it opened the other way, it would only be able to go to about 45 or so before it gets into this right here and this, so it'd be like that, which means this is your access to it. Where do you stand? You're gonna be standing out here on the edge of the, the rounded fuel tank here, trying to get your chains out, and if you slip, if it's wet, if it's icy, whatever, so by having it open that way, I have my path up right here and over here, and I'm gonna get some more of this tread plate and put between these tank straps, and these are gonna move somewhere else to go right there. So I have like a platform to stand on right here where I got good grip. See, plenty of access to the chains. I've got plenty of room up here, just fine. You also gotta keep in mind that this is a dual purpose truck and it will get run without this on here where you're getting up and onto the center of the truck here to get stuff in and out of there without this in the way. So opening to the outside is the way it should be and is why I specifically have it opening that way. Now, yes, one of the roll up door headache racks where the whole door just rolls up and wide open and folds up up there would have been much more convenient for the dual purpose truck like this one is because then you can get stuff from over here over there whatever it doesn't matter but that means i would lose the back window and i did not want to lose the back window yes i'm perfectly capable of driving a truck that doesn't have a back window and pulling a trailer back into places i've had a lot of sleeper trucks that didn't have back windows but uh with the wrecker here a lot of times i'm hooking up on the side of the road and i need to pull out into a live lane sometimes i'm in the opposite shoulder on the oncoming side and need to pull out into a lane and being able to look out of there right back down there and see with my eyes traffic coming or not, not trying to look through a mirror just right or whatever, or even a camera. Um, the back window is 100% worth it just from a safety point in roadside work. And by the way, this camera, the backup camera that everybody asks about, like what kind is it here? No camera found, of course there isn't. Uh, it's a Garmin and it's garbage and I hate it and I'm gonna replace it because it doesn't work most of the time. So yeah, basically that's what happened when I hit 200,000 subscribers. In the, the actual YouTube world, nothing it, it doesn't matter one bit but as far as sponsorships i have gotten a lot more and a lot bigger sponsorship offers um in my email i probably get five to ten sponsorship offers a day a lot of them are so far out and not even remotely related to like this channel that they don't really count like I'm talking like women's clothing line wants to sponsor my channel no we're not doing that but um what I've gotten in offers and the type of companies that are reaching out is increasing dramatically once I cross over that 200 uh, mark. I think they can filter when they, when they search for channels to sponsor. They, they can filter by subscriber number and that's what they do. So that's where that number matters. 
And if we were doing more sponsorships, yes, it would be very important. But if we're not, it's not, so. Okay, quick cut in here with my cell phone because I'm editing this video and I realized I forgot to say something that I said I would say later in the video, so I'm putting it in now. But something I've noticed in my analytics is if you were to rank my videos from highest to lowest, and then rank my videos in watch time percentage from lowest to highest, they would match up perfectly. So my highest viewed video, 1.5 million views, has the lowest percentage of watch time. It goes down the list like that until you get to like some of my lowest viewed videos have the highest percentage of watch time. And I know some people say that's because more people watched it, so that's more people cut out early, it throws a percentage off, but I think something different's going on. You see, YouTube's goal is to make money. End of story, that's it. And how do they make money? By selling advertisements on videos. And what happens every time a video starts playing? An ad plays. So if I make a five minute video and you watch the entire thing from beginning to end, you watched five minutes of YouTube and saw one ad because five minute videos don't have mineral ads. You have to be eight minutes or longer and whatever. But if I made that five minute video and you watched one minute of it and then went and watched another video and watched one minute of it and then watched another video, only one minute of it for five minutes in that same five minutes, you saw five ads. Now, whether those are my videos you watched or not, YouTube made five times as much money off that same five minutes of viewing time from you than if you watched one five minute video all the way through. So my theory is that YouTube really likes videos that people short watch, but stay on YouTube watching other videos. Now, if you short watch a video and then leave the YouTube platform, YouTube absolutely hates you because they're like, hey, this person's making people leave YouTube, not cool. But if you short watch them and stay on the YouTube platform, YouTube loves you because that's just that many more ads they're able to put in front of your face, charge for it and make money off of. And that's how I think it works. Either way, uh, I got more work to do on this, so I'm gonna do that and we will see you guys in the next one. Uh, like this video if you haven't subscribe all the, the things you're, you that they tell you to do do it do the likes and the subscribes and the shares and the, the comments and the stuff because apparently that's what you're supposed to say on youtube so there it is have a good one